Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and I have the absolute most giga intense Pantheon game that you're ever gonna see on YouTube. So in the beginning part of the video, I'm gonna explain to you guys how to build Pantheon. There's timestamps in the description if you just wanna skip to the gameplay. Um, I have a few announcements to make as well. I'll make those announcements during the gameplay part. So don't worry about it if you wanna skip out the build. So how do you build Pantheon? Um, I've tried some things. Let me just tell you, I've tried like going for Blade of the Rune King first and nah, nah. You know, it's good. I'm not gonna tell you it's bad, but Black Cleaver is just better. And the simple reason is like, even though you're actually gonna do a little less damage, uh, 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 like in the longer term, first of all, the burst damage is bigger because this item gives you 40 attack damage. Blade of the Rune King only gives you 20. Secondly, 25 ability haste blade of the room king is not going to give you any ability haste and third of all 350 bonus max health so as i said even though blade of the room king especially with your second ability is going to deal significantly more damage right like i'm not going to tell you it's not going to deal more damage it's just not worth as your first item as a pantheon you're much better off going for a black cleaver um so black cleaver first the boot, the boots that you want to get is situational. Generally, play the steel caps, you know, for the armor. If you're against like uh, pretty heavy, uh, 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 um, if you're against like pretty heavy attack damage, you go for play the steel caps. Mercury threats, of course, good if you're against heavy CC. And Ionian boots, I've seen some people go up for it, and that's why I'm mentioning it. But I never really do it. You could, you're much better off going for a play the steel caps in most cases. Uh, second item, Blade of the uh, Blade of the King in most cases, okay? This is gonna be like 80% of the games. If the enemy is prioritizing getting HP items, or if the enemy is just uh, by nature tanky, you know, like a Mundo or something, then Blade of the Rune King's second item is gonna be absolutely perfect. However, if the enemy is like very squishy and they're only going damage items and just, you know, not any, uh, uh, nothing like that, then actually you could even start with a Yumbo's Ghost Blade as your first item, but that's only really on Jungle Pantheon. On Baron Lane Pantheon, which I'm gonna be playing today, you don't want to get a Yumbo's Ghost Blade. I'm only, like only on Jungle Pantheon. If the enemy is very squishy, you can get away with the Yumbo's Ghost Blade for the early game damage. But Baron Lane Pantheon, just get the Black Lever. You know, even if they're squishy, just get the Black Lever. Um, second item, if they're super squishy, you know, you can skip out the Blade of the Rune King if you want to. It's a really good item, but if they're really, really squishy, you can actually choose to go for like a Guardian Angel or just something else to do a lot of damage or, you know, just, just, just some other item to do insane damage. But most cases, because a lot of items give a lot of HP, you know, even, even like, if you look at items like, uh, wait, let me show you the right one, like Edge of Night, it gives you bonus health, right? Like, if you look at, uh, not this one, Le Leandris, it gives you bonus HP, Green Book gives you bonus HP, you know, all these items give a lot of HP, so generally, that's why I said Blade of the Rune King is gonna be good in most games. Third item, you know, it's situational. Uh, Sterox Cage is always going to be good, but the thing is, Death Dance is especially a good item on Pantheon because Pantheon's third ability blocks out all damage, even true damage, by the way. So if if you take a lot of damage and the delayed damage is going to come, boom, you use your shield and you block all of it. So you know, basically, you have to decide what you need. Uh, Guardian Angel is insanely powerful on Pantheon too, but as I said, I can't really like. Should I go over? Should I go over th uh, over all the items? Because you can get so many different items as Pantheon's third, fourth, and fifth item. It's like you can get a lot. So that's why I'm not really gonna talk about uh, all of them because it's completely situational on what you need. Um, enchantment, Proto Belt to get close to the enemy and surprise them with a stun. Really, really good. So for your roots, you go for Conquer. It's very easy with Pantheon to stack up the Conqueror. With the Empowered second ability, you will already get three stacks of Conqueror. Second rune, um, I have Brutal here. Honestly, Champion is better to dominate your lane, but like I'm gonna repeat it in every video. I do not like Champion because it only gives 8% damage. But it is, like, I'm, I'm still gonna be honest with you guys, it is generally better than the Brutal. I just don't like the way that it works because if you die, you permanently lose the damage. At least Brutal is gonna give you that damage forever, right? Um, um, third rune, situational. Hunter Titan, if the enemy has a lot of CC. Otherwise, get an adaptive carapace. Or. Or you can get bone plating if you're against a Teemo, against a, a, a Riven, you know, champions like that that use multiple abilities. Bone plating can be good. So yeah, bone plating, Hunter Titan, or Adaptive Carapace. Fourth rune, Sweet Tooth. Because Sweet Tooth, 
Yes, that's right. Sweet Tooth is broken. Uh, for your spells, you go for Flash and Ignite. Always Ignite. Unless you're Jungle, of course, but always Ignite in the Baron lane. And the reason is because he's an like he can execute the enemy. And Ignite is going to contribute towards that execution. So enough about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. <clears throat> it's not... Yeah, there it is. Sound? There we go, we can hear sound. On to the gameplay. So let's take a look at the thing that I'm already doing on Pantheon. So with Pantheon, you do not take an upgrade. You do not take an upgrade, you just wait in the bush, and then if an enemy shows up, it's a free kill. An enemy does show up, free kill. Unfortunately, my team didn't follow up. Very unfortunately, otherwise he was literally a free kill. Um, but basically, that's the thing that you can do with Pantheon. You can get a free kill in the early game if you catch an enemy like that, and your team follows up. It's okay though. Um, a quick little announcement that I have to make, just quick. The mid laner in this game is a challenger player. Uh, he's playing on a smurf. His name is Ryu. Uh, I think I pronounced that right. And I'm gonna take a vacation next week. Basically, I'm gonna go to München, have some fun. I am gonna bring my laptop with me though to still make videos, but I don't wanna play Wild Rift. So he's actually gonna help me provide content for the channel. And he's a challenger player. And he also plays every role, just like me. That's why I picked him for it, of course. And yeah, so you guys are going to be seeing some different gameplay as well, but not, you know, just a few videos. So you guys can see some different perspective, a different play style. So I think it's a really good idea. So let me know your thoughts on that as well. Also, I'm doing a 15 skin giveaway. Easy kill, by the way. I'm not sure how I'm going to do the giveaway because uh, you have to wait for two weeks to gift the skin, but I'm going to figure it out. So I'm still giving away skins. No problem. There, by the way, easy kill. You know, that's the whole, like, that's the whole power of Pantheon. You can absolutely destroy him. Look at this. Look. This is what Pantheon does, guys. You can you can absolutely destroy him. I, I'll get close to him. I can kill him. I take the heal. What a disgusting move. Ah, but he kills me. Totally worth, by the way. So, not only did I kill two of them, I also took the heal. So, for the next fight, Darius doesn't have a heal. And if you look at the map... I still have my heal. So these are the little things, but what does this mean? This means that I can look for a trade with the, Dari uh, with the Darius, even if it's a losing trade, and then I'm gonna heal up and then I'm gonna kill him. So now I really need to fight him. I really need to go on him and fight him, regardless of losing the trade. I just have to go on him. I just like, look, I'm immediately going on him. As I said, even if I lose the trade, it's okay. But actually it seems like we're not losing the trade. Boom. Well, I killed him. That's also fine. <laughs> um, and by the way, Pantheon's third ability used to block turret shots, but they removed it very quickly when they realized it was completely absurdly broken. So unfortunately now, it doesn't block it anymore. You know, now I killed him yet again. I go back, get my black cleaver, and like this is the whole power of Pantheon. And in this game, you'll also see the weakness of Pantheon. That's all I'm gonna say. That is all I'm gonna say. With a 35 minute video, and me telling you that in this game you're also going to see the weakness of Pantheon. So the power of Pantheon, which is the first thing that we talk about, is that Pantheon is perhaps the strongest early game champion in the game. Let me think. He is stronger than Lee Sin. No, actually Draven is stronger than Pantheon, but the strongest Baron laner in the game. Pantheon is literally the strongest Baron laner at level 1, level 2, level 3, you know, in the early game. By the way... A way that you can easily outtrade a Darius, by the way, very easily. Let's take a look at this. No, oh, his shield saved his ass, otherwise I would have killed him. Um, so when you're against a Darius, you know how Darius uses his first ability and he slashes his axe around? When he procs his first ability, exactly at that moment, you use your second ability. And what's gonna happen, like look, I think I'm gonna do it here. No, I, I dodged it, which is also fine. So there's two ways to avoid Darius's, sec uh, Darius's first ability when you play Pantheon. First way is of course to just wait, you know, when he uses it, just wait. But the second way is, if you're really close up to him, he clicks on his first ability, you instantly stun him with your second ability. What's gonna happen is your stun is gonna move you towards the middle of Darius, so you're gonna be avoiding that outer half of the first ability. So he's not gonna heal up, he's not gonna get a stack, and he's not gonna do a lot of damage to you. Really, really important. Same goes for Camille. If you're against a Camille, for example, as a Pantheon, 
utilize the second ability to dodge Camille's second ability. You know that that ability that slashes on the ground? Pantheon can do that. So use that second ability to reposition yourself and dodge sneaks with it, right? Because you can. Why the hell wouldn't you? Oh my god, look at that. Why the, how disgusting is that? Pantheon, by the way, um, with your ultimate, you can very easily roam around the map. So as you can see, I rotated to the dragon, you know, helped my team with the dragon, and Darius cannot do anything. He's not going to be able to do any damage on my turret whatsoever. Look, any damage. Quick little thing, by the way. After you use your ultimate, you're instantly going to get five stacks of your passive. So you don't actually have to have five stacks already. I don't have mana, no. So you don't have to have five stacks before using your ultimate. Just a quick little tip. So don't be afraid to ult in if you don't have stacks. Because it's going to give you all of your stacks anyways. Look at this cheeky little play that I'm doing right here, by the way. I am not instantly taking the minion. I was waiting for the enemy minion to kill mine first. I made the enemy lose the cannon minion and then I last hit it. Then I backboarded. And now the wave is frozen in the middle. Let me tell you what would have happened if I actually killed the enemy minion fast. What would have happened is uh, uh, if I killed that minion fast, my cannon would still be alive. And you need to listen very carefully here. My cannon would still be alive. Then the wave would have been uh, bigger on my side than on his side. And it would have killed all of his minions, making me lose tons of golden experience. And Darius would have had a free freeze. He could freeze the lane forever, and I'm never going to be able to do anything against it. Look at this, like, so easy to trade in the early game. He cannot outtrade me. Boom, look at that. I can stun him under the third, and he's dead. It was a bait. So, while you may think that I should have protobelted there, no. I purposely didn't protobelt, because I actually genuinely wanted to get hit by his first ability. Because that means that he would get under my third, then I stun him under the third, and he's dead. Pantheon, by the way, is a really good anti-diving champion as well. And what I mean with anti-diving is if an enemy tries to dive you, you're very good at countering it as a Pantheon. Because you can stun the enemy under the turret. You have your third ability... Oh, he's just dead. You have your third ability to tank damage. And then you have your first ability to execute the enemy. Look at this! Oh! My third ability didn't, like, he, he does zero damage when I use my third ability. Did you see that? Did you see how stupid that was? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable that that worked. Like, how stupid is that? How stupid was that? Did you see that? Those are the things that Pantheon can do. But I want you guys to look at the enemy composition. And look at our composition. Pantheon, now, like, I'm now going to talk about the massive weakness of Pantheon. Because as I said, Pantheon is absolutely insanely powerful in the early game. You Like, I'm 6 on 1. And honestly, 80% of my Pantheon games go like this. Maybe. You know, I just destroy the enemy. But that's how it's supposed to go. That's the thing. That is exactly how it's supposed to go. Because in the late game, you're almost useless. Unless you find some good stuns. Unless, you know, but, but you're pretty much useless. Um, like, look, here I'm still super powerful using my shield to block auto damage. Get close to them, boom, and he's dead, and he's dead as well. So you really, really want to try to snowball the enemy. You should basically see Pantheon as Draven. He's basically the same as Draven. He's insanely broken in the early game, but he falls off massively in the late game. As you can see, eight minutes into the game, I already have two items. Exactly how you want to be playing with Pantheon. At this point, when I get my Blade of the Rune King, no one can kill me unless of course i get caught in a bad position but if i play it correctly i should never die up until Vayne gets like three items or something or well actually with two items she can also kill me but you, you see what i'm saying here another dragon is up of course i'm moving here to help them look i'm using using my ultimate i'm constantly fighting constantly ah that was not good but my shield blocked everything Boom! Look at that, guys. Like, the whole power of Pantheon. Stunning enemies. Boom! Executing with the first ability. Using your third ability to block damage. Exactly how you need to play Pantheon. This is quite literally the absolute perfect game in the early game on how to play Pantheon. I've basically secured two dragons for my team. I've, you know, constantly rotated, helped my team out. As a Pantheon, you never, ever, never, ever want to split push. 
maybe in 1% of your games where for some reason it's good to split push in the early game but never ever ever in the early game should you split push on pantheon always always help your team in the early game it's just you have to make use of this massive power spike that he has in the early game you have to you just have to so try whenever you can go and the reason is that you always have to do it because you can save your turret as well with your ultimate right you can save your ultimate when you move to the dragon to go back to your lane and save your turret like look yet again helping my team i'm just coming with my ultimate i have to the thing is i really have to because look at their composition look at their composition lulu vain twisted faith if they get to the late game regardless of how ahead we are we are doomed like we are absolutely doomed like the only way we could possibly win in the late game is if morgana just absolutely hard carries or if caitlin somehow out damages a vein which is never gonna happen of course especially a lulu vein so that is why like basically i'm destroying the enemy but i am also desperate believe it or not like believe it or not i am nine on one with pantheon but i am desperate I'm desperate to just get ahead as much as we can. That's why you can see me Rift Herald, Dragon, ganking lanes, using my ultimate, just constantly, constantly trying to get the enemies behind. Because you have to do that. If you do not do that, you're going to get punished so hard for it. Like, look, I'm going to try to fight him again. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that damage. By the way, another tip against the Dairy, look like, Against the Darius, when you use your third ability, he's not going to get any stacks. He's not going to get any stacks. Um, um, what was I saying? Yes. So when a Darius basic attacks you, while you use your shield, he doesn't get any stacks. And you will actually deal damage because your shield also deals damage. By the way, if you're against like a Teemo or something, uh, the Teemo first ability still blinds you, but you're not going to take damage. Same against the Twisted Fate. His card is going to stun you. The, the shield of Pantheon doesn't actually block CC. It only blocks damage. So you can still get stunned, but yeah. Here you can see yet again, you know, taking turrets with the Rift Herald. I'm not saving it up. I'm just constantly going. Now I get a Starrux Gage. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm maintaining this lead. You have to maintain this massive lead to keep snowballing. Unfortunately, the Amumu gets caught, which is horrible for us, by the way. This is like this is the only way that they can make a comeback if someone gets caught. Like, that's not good. This is not good. Look, like I'm yet again aggressive playstyle. Do not farm with Pantheon. Like, I don't want to see you guys farming constantly with Pantheon because that's not how it works. If you get to the late game, you're screwed. So let's take a look at this. Just looking at constant aggression. And I'm basically like, the way that we have to kill an enemy, I stun an enemy and then Morgana uses her first ability. Free kill. It's always going to be a free kill. And the Morgana, who is my duo queue, is actually going to play incredibly well. I mean, this is also a way to catch an enemy. Like, as you can see, I caught an enemy right there. Oh, I almost killed her as well. Boom, boom, another kill. Look at that. No, I gave him stacks. I killed him as well, though. But this is not good. We're dying. I gave an eight. I actually gave a thousand gold shutdown to Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate is basically going to be able to buy a whole item after that fight. Like he's going to get that. Uh, what is that item called? Lich Bane. He's going to get that Lich Bane just because of that fight. Look, he has 11,000 gold. This was horrible. Like even though we kind of won that fight, it was horrible. It is fine because if our Amumu can take the dragon, it is okay. Because, like, as I said, um, the whole power of Pantheon is to get your team ahead, get as many dragons as you can, get as many turrets as you can. Because, as I said, you are useless in the late game, but if you can get super ahead in the game, of course, your team is going to be, you know, it's good for your team. They actually stole it. That is so horrible for us. This is, this is horrible. This is, like, this is horrible 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 as i said the whole point of pantheon get your team ahead get the dragons we just gave them an infernal dragon and and uh kills not what we want to do morgana is doing a really good job though you know ryo is playing it very well uh but this is this is not looking too good for us regardless of me having 12 kills and only three deaths it's not looking too good for us because i am pantheon I've showed you guys this many, many times before on my Pantheon videos, that regardless of how fed you are, 
you cannot solo carry a game on Pantheon. You cannot. You just can't. So like what so what should your plan be right now, right? Because the enemy is making a comeback. What should my plan be to still win this game? Let me tell you. Catch out enemies. So in the late game, basically, there's only two things that you can do as well. <clears throat> like three things that you can do. First thing that you can do is catch an enemy. Like, look, look, look at how desperate I am. I'm literally going for the Baron out of desperation, but we cannot do it because they know. But I'm just really desperate for something. But uh, the things that Pantheon can do in the late game, first of all, catch out an enemy with your second ability. Secondly, save one of your teammates if an enemy dives like if if for example if the darius dives my team i can stun him with my empowered second ability the stun duration is one and a half second which is pretty long third thing that pantheon can do is buy time the build that you go is <clears throat> sterex gauge death dance you know defense you want to get defense items so what that's gonna do it's gonna make you tanky and when you use your third ability it's gonna block 100% of the damage from that direction so you can tank up damage those are the only things that you can do as a pantheon you're not gonna carry or anything so keep that in mind guys really really important catching out enemies saving a teammate uh, uh, wasting time by tanking damage those are the three things that you can do in the late game so now we are approaching the late game with pantheon you have to have a complete shift in mindset. As I said, early game mindset, destroy, 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 destroy. You want to take each and every fight. Late game mindset, those three things. Catch out an enemy, save a teammate, tank damage. Those three things are the only things. Let's take a look at this. I screwed up my ultimate. I actually screwed up my ultimate. It's fine though, because he's still going to get caught by the Amumu. Actually, he's not. Wow. I have protobot, I could get close to him. Nah. Yeah, I can still kill him. Like, I have so much damage. Yeah, I can like still kill him like this. This is fine. Like, as I said, I'm not fighting with my team. I'm trying to 1v1 or 2v1 with the uh, Amumu, the Twisted Faith. Because actually, in the late game, the only... Well, you are still strong at 1v1s. But the problem is, in the late game, there's not going to be many 1v1 situations. So, yeah. In the late game, you know, you want to look for those one versus ones or the three other things that I mentioned. So take a look at this. I catch a Lulu, as I said, catching out an enemy. I'm just waiting in the bush right there. I'm not even helping with the Baron. Literally just waiting in the bush. Look, this is what I'm doing. This is literally what I'm doing. Can I kill the Lulu? Yeah, this is worth it. Like, as I said, you're so useless in the late game that it's actually worth... Oh my... Good job, Darius. Huh? You know, seeing that makes me makes me pretty happy. You know, seeing those good Darius plays right there. He absolutely destroyed us. The Elder Dragon is up, and Elder Dragon is basically that moment where uh, you kind of have to fight. And if you've snowballed well with Pantheon, you will still be way stronger than the enemy at this stage. But we have screwed up. Like as you can see, we're dying. We screwed up. We were not super strong compared to them anymore because we gave them massive bounties. But if you look at this game, and if we didn't actually give them a lot of bounties, we would have absolutely destroyed them in this fight. <gasps> oh! He almost stole it! But now they have the Elder Dragon. It's basically game over. Basically. Yeah, like this is... Yeah, okay, they have Inferno and the Elder. Wow. Like... This game is basically over. They have the Elder Mountain Dragon. The, the, the only win condition that we have is like if I either catch out a super important carry or Morgana just somehow out damaging them while they have the Elder Mountain Dragon. Like this game, yeah, yeah. Like look, I'm desperately trying to catch an enemy, but yeah, you you can clearly see I'm absolutely useless right now. I'm just 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 doing nothing, literally nothing. Look at this. Like, it's actually pathetic. It's actually pathetic that how, how bad Pantheon is in the late game. It's absolutely pathetic. How do we win this game? Well, if you're in a situation like this, the way that you win the game is desperation. <laughs> Sounds so stupid, but literally desperation. 
you have to go for desperate barons. You have to go for desperate plays. You have to go for desperate ways of catching out an enemy. Just full desperation. That's the only way that you can win. Because if we go for a normal 5 versus 5 fight, we're not going to win. Or, for example, you have to go for the desperate backdoor. Right? Try to kill their nexus. Desperate plays are the only plays that are going to get that are going to win you a game like this. Because look at their composition. Do you really think they're going to lose the later on we get into the game? Vain, Twisted Faith, Lulu. No. The only way we could win is desperation. Catch out an enemy that makes a mistake. Uh, do a Baron out of desperation. You know, that kind of stuff. We just have to do it. We just have to do it. That's the only way we can win. Baron is spawning in 50 seconds. We have to play around that Baron. You know, we have to do something. Either kill all of them, get the Baron, just, just something. Because the... Um, if we wait it out, we lose, right? We just lose if we wait it out. If we wait it out, give them Baron, them with the Elder Dragon and the Baron, they're of course just gonna win the game. Look at that damage, man. It's crazy, like, one card and one first ability is like almost 60% of my HP. No way. He could have actually killed me, believe it or not. Oh, look, this is the desperation. Trying to catch him out out of desperation, and it works. Look, it works. I immediately went for it. Flash everything, just using everything to get those skills. Look at that. Stun him. Boom. Boom. Yes. There we go. And now we have to go for the Baron. Like, as I said, this is the only way. This is the only way. I got two kills. The only way they almost killed all of our, our all of our nexus turrets. By the way, look, the inhibitor turrets are incredibly low. They have the mid lane one already, but we just have to like look desperation. I know that I can pro that I know that I will get destroyed in a one versus one against the vein, but desperation. Look, I engage, I waste time. I engage, I waste time, and that time waste resulted in us winning a fight. You see what I'm saying here? Even though this is a completely lost game, I am just engaging and wasting time and i'm relying on my team to carry and they did i killed myself in the game i wasted time with the third ability that is what pantheon can do as i said and yes we actually killed them now we're still in a horrible position like as you can see desperation teleport caitlin buys teleport boots you know she cleared out the wave she buys teleport boots just doing the baron we have to we have to as you can see you know they're just doing the baron our jungler is alive enemy jungler is coming smite we smite it now go out. Oh my god, look at that damage. They have to kill the Twisted Fate? They don't? It's okay. Go back. Go back. Let me tell you one thing. The enemy has the Elder Dragon, but there is a huge but right here. Baron also gives you a buff. Baron gives you bonus attack damage and bonus ability power. Unfortunately, I will not get it because I, I was dead when they got the Baron. But my teammates currently have a bonus attack damage and bonus ability power. So perhaps a slightly bigger chance of winning a fight, especially for Morgana because she is our main carry right now. You know, I was the main carry early game, but now she is. Look at what I'm doing. I am pushing out the side lane. You know, I'm telling them to be careful. Um, like what we need to do now is we need to get inhibitors or like we need to try to finish the game basically like you know after this baron our chances of winning are zero so at least we should get inhibited inhibitors look i'm ready to help them with the fight i am not only gonna split push because if they lose this fight we lose the game i immediately use my ultimate he catches him i wait for the root and then I go on him. Like, the reason that I was waiting with my second ability is because I wanted to wait for the root to run out and then jump on him. But unfortunately, he was actually still able to dash away with his third ability. Like, look at this. Vayne is in the bot lane. We have to do something now because Vayne is not here. Desperate place. Like, oh my god, the damage. Yeah, Amumu, desperation. We all go in. Look at this. We all go in. Oh, we got two kills. Look at this, it's working, yes! They only Vayne is alive, only Vayne is alive, only Vayne. We have to end, we have to end. We won the game, yes! We won, it worked, and we won the game. Oh, me and Ryu absolutely hard carried this game, by the way, absolutely hard carried this game. You'll see it, you'll see it, the damage graph. Oh, what a game. We were not supposed to win that anymore. Like, I dominated in the early game, but...
we were not supposed to win because the enemies actually made the comeback. I performed better than 96% of Pantheons, but yet Ryu still got the MVP because he performed better than 97% of Morgana. Like, yeah. So yeah, both of us did insane damage. And yeah, look at that. Look at that damage graph. Look at that. How insane is that? <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this Pantheon video. And uh, yeah, like always, I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.